Thank you for joining us here at HockeyS.com. Don't forget to sign up for our website at HockeyS.com today. Become a member. It takes three simple steps. Uh, join the HockeyS community and help us um, uh, rate the products that we've shown uh, here on the website and, um, and uh, help us uh, let us know what you want to see here at HockeyS.com. Um, you know, but you guys can't do that unless you become a member. So uh, if you go on there, log on, uh, and just let us know what you'd like to see uh, viewed here. And uh, actually, we're going to be doing something different today. We're going to be talking, um, you know, about how to pick out a, a stick, whether it's a one-piece stick or a wooden stick. And uh, the reason why I mention that is because, again, with, uh, with joining our website, we have had a lot of people that, uh, that have asked us, um, you know, to go over a lot of different things, whether it would be uh, equipment, um, how to pick out a stick, what kind of sticks are better. We do get a lot of feedback from you guys, which we, we appreciate. And we're trying to, uh, we're trying to cover all the, the grounds and, uh, and different things that you guys want to see or, or the questions that you have that we feel or whatever. We're trying to uh, answer them as, as best as we can. So one of the things that we were asked about from, from a lot of young guys and a lot of, even a lot of older guys were, uh, you know, I guess in, in different areas, um, they're not sure on how to pick out a different stick, what the sticks are made of, uh, what the different properties and materials of a stick can do for a certain person. Uh, so we're going to do this in a, a two-part process here. Uh, this first process that we're going to go over today is going to be just the anatomy of a stick. Um, you know, the different names that, we, that we'll call uh, the stick and the different portions of the stick um, uh, and more or less, you know, just going along those lines. Uh, in part two, we're going to get along, we'll actually um, discuss the different blades, the curves, and what they could possibly do for you and your technique on the way you shoot. So starting off with the anatomy of the stick, um, first there's, uh, there's, of course, you know that there's two different types of stick. There's a one-piece stick and then there's also, which I'm holding in my hands here today, uh, and I'm doing this for a reason. This is an Easton Synergy. This is the Synthesis uh, Tapered Shaft. And I, I brought this on here today to show you, um, you know, the difference between a tapered shaft and a regular shaft. Uh, and this tapered uh, shaft version is more or less what the one-piece stick uh, is based off of. This is where it's kind of got its uh, beginnings from. Uh, and I believe um, probably in the early, I should say mid, mid to early 90s, uh, Mission came out with the... Um, with the low kick point tapered shaft it didn't go over too well uh, and then I guess a lot of different companies uh, kind of bought into that um, uh, into that uh, that system and the way that it works uh, once it was proven so uh, this here is just your regular shaft uh, it takes a replacement blade which I'll grab for you here there's a couple different replacement blades that I have here and I'll go over them with you in a, in a few seconds but uh, a one piece stick now there's two types of one piece sticks out there there's actually one piece stick to where it's a two part system the one, the one blade will actually be inserted. This is uh, actually just for hanging on a rack, but the blade actually goes inside of the stick just like this here. This is called a hosel. First we have um, your shaft, okay, which comes in a few different sizes. You'll have a youth, usually sometimes a junior, and then uh, intermediate, and then senior flexes. Um, this is where, this is called the hosel, this, this end of the stick here. And this is where the blade actually goes into the shaft. Now on, uh, on, on some one-piece sticks, there's two different types. There's a, uh, a one-piece stick that has a blade insertion like this and then body work that goes in and covers up to where the, uh, the blade insertion is. And then on a lot of the higher-end true one-piece sticks, it still starts off as a shaft, but then when they put the blade in, it's a material that gets woven in, almost like a weave that gets woven up to sometimes up into maybe 11, 12 inches up into the shaft. And that's why they can call it a true one-piece stick. It's not like uh, it's been extruded out of a machine that makes the blade and the, uh, and the shaft all in one. So that's basically the difference between, you know, the two different one-piece sticks, as, as they say. Uh, there's two different insertions on there. Um, so this, like I said, this is called your hosel. This is your regular shaft. And... Uh, and here's the butt end. Uh, the particular model that I'm holding here is an Easton. It's a 75 flex. I did that uh, because it's a little shorter, so I can get a lot more of this into the camera. Um, now I will tell you. I'm going to hold this for me here and grab the blade. I'm going to show you the difference here in the in the, in the blades. I have an Easton Synergy synthesis blade here. Okay, and you can see the differences between the two hosel sizes here, where it goes into the uh, shaft. And this is where the one-piece stick got its concept from. Again, like I said, I believe it was in the mid-90s, uh, Mission started off with this, uh, with this system here. And what they found out is when you put uh, the blade, when you take all this material here out of the, um, out of the hosel, it takes a lot of pressure away from where the bottom of the, the shaft would, be, uh, would go in. There was a lot of breakages with guys getting slashed, taking shots. You know, uh, of course, we've all done it. We go out there and we take a lot of shots um, 
slap shots. You go, you buy a brand new $150 one piece stick, and the first thing that you do, you step out on the ice. Uh, you know, you don't try to stick handle with it. You go, you take a couple strides on the ice, and you hammer a slap shot with it. So repetitively, over and over and over again, you know, you got to take it into consideration. It is graphite. It is composite. It's made out of lightweight materials. It's going to crack and it's going to break eventually. You know, and uh, I guess it just depends on where you. Um, uh, where you cut your stick at sometimes it could have uh, different flexes different kick points and and more or less That's where it would break anywhere between four to six inches above on the shaft um, So what they found out Going through that was is that the lower That you put this down here the lower the, the shorter the hosel end of this is the kick point is a little lower on the shaft which brings the Shot more up towards like uh, where the flex more towards the bottom of your hand which gives you a little bit more accuracy harder shot more accuracy and um, that's pretty much how they came up with that system. And everybody's using it, but you still have a lot of guys uh, like this Easton S15 blade here that I'm holding. It's still a standard, uh, you know, standard uh, blade. Uh, this is the one that everybody pretty much uh, still uses. A lot of guys are used to this because they haven't been into the, uh, the whole tapered end of this. Now, there are a couple different companies out there that do do. Uh, this is a standard, um, standard. Uh, blade insertion and this is what you're going to call your uh, your synthesis or your smaller so the difference is the, the thickness and the width both uh, on both sides here is a lot smaller than a standard standard insertion um, and Easton does make a low kick point blade with a standard shaft so uh, you know there's, there's a couple different blades a lot of these guys are made out of um, you know f as you get to a lower point like a um, and a lot of guys have asked us, well, what's the difference between an $80 stick or a $100 stick? And it just has to do more or less with components. The components of the stick, um, some are made out of just fiberglass and composites, cheaper material composites. And you'll find that um, that those composite materials can be a little uh, little heavier, but they're also a little bit more durable because you're you're adding more material into the uh, into the product. Um, so that's sometimes why, if you've noticed, you bought you know $150 stick, $200 stick. Uh, you've had it for less than a month and it breaks where you went out uh, and in between waiting for your your stick to come back from the manufacturer you bought an eighty dollar stick and it lasted you for a year um, you know that's again because there's a lot more material involved in the other one and, uh, and a lot of these hockey companies have the concept that um, if you uh, the more money you spend on a shaft and and the more high tech it is you're going to get more of a um, I guess more of a response a better feel and and a better everything on a stick the cheaper the stick that you have, it's not going to have the uh, the response. It's not going to have what it's supposed to do, but it's going to last you a lot longer. So the more money you spend, uh, they say don't expect it to last uh, quite as long as a cheaper stick is going to last. Um, so that's the difference with the materials. Um, you know, in a lot of lightweight material sticks, they're going to use Kevlar and uh, all these high energy transfer um, uh, materials that they're using in there. Um, now, and, and going over your different flexes again, um, you know, borrow this shaft here. <clears throat> you have a couple different kick points. You have a low kick point, and then you also have a mid kick point. A lot of your taper shafts, when you do take a shot, you'll get a kick that comes down in here. Now, a low kick point more or less means when you do take this shot um, that you're going to get a little bit more. And I'll turn this here for you. Uh, when you take a low kick point, it's going to bend in here. It's going to come through, and it's going to come through a little bit faster as opposed to a high kick point. Now, generally, through a lot of the um, a lot of the manufacturers, a low kick point gives you a little bit more accuracy, and um, I guess depending on your technique. And uh, I bring this up for a reason, because all of us have a different technique. We all shoot differently. We all follow through differently. So, um, the point of me doing this video is to just give uh, you know some some. I guess some subjective uh, ideas to you guys out there that you could uh, you could more or less take with you when you go to the store to pick out a stick. Uh, just because you know uh, one guy tells you that he uses a low kick point stick and and um, you know and he's got 110 mile an hour slap shot doesn't mean that you're going to have that. You know if, if you're stronger than the guy, it all depends on your technique. Um, you know low kick point does mean that you um, uh, that you get a little bit more power and a little bit more accuracy and you can actually do a little bit less uh, effortlessly, but. Um, it doesn't mean that it's going to work for you. I mean, you might get a stick that has a higher kick point to it that because you're the type of guy that goes out there and wants to hammer shots all day, that that could be the stick for you. So more or less, a lot of this has to come with um, with what feels comfortable to you. Um, you know, again, how the blade is how the blade is made. Some blades have uh, a high density foam in there. Some of them have air chambers in there. It just really all depends on on your technique and um, and how you shoot. So. Pretty much a lot of stuff is just all experimental, you know what I mean? 
uh, and uh, you know that's more or less where you have to go when you go to the store. That's why I don't like a lot of times when when kids come uh, come up to us and ask us, you know, you know, what should we use? Because my coach said that my stick is too long or the blade is too big, or and I said to the kid, you know, well, uh, you know, do you have any problems uh, handling the puck? And they say no. I mean, they're, they're the leading scorer on a the team. They have just as much in assists, and the kids are really, really good. Well, then why fix it if it's not broken? If it's working for you, don't tell, don't let anybody tell you what type of stick that you should have. If it feels comfortable to you and it's working, and you're not having a problem, then leave it alone. Um, and that's basically what um, you know what we have to go over on a stick. And don't forget, uh, especially with a lot of these sticks, they come with different. Um, um, you know different um, flexes here 75 flex 85 flex it all depends uh, like I've shown you on previous videos before as you cut the sticks the, sh the stiffer the shafts are and that also does change the flex point and the kick point on a lot of these sticks so uh, keep in mind that you know you don't have to buy a super stick, uh, stiff shaft because when you do cut that off there which Bauer and a lot of other companies have they mark on here how much that changes the stiffness of the shaft and it will change your technique and and how you shoot the um, you know how you shoot the puck so join us for part two and then we'll actually go over a few different um, uh, curves and lies and everything that the uh, that the manufacturers have to offer and uh, we'll help you uh, again choose your um, help you basically choose your stick that you're looking for uh, in a one-piece stick uh, in today's market a lot of these sticks are getting more and more expensive and um, hopefully this guide will help you uh, help you uh, go in the right direction Thank you for joining us here at HockeyUs.com. Don't forget to log on our website today, become a member of HockeyUs, and uh, you know, let us know what you want to see, whether it's equipment or you'd like to see uh, some forums discussed. Let us know what you think. Thanks for joining us here at HockeyUs.com.